So, how much interest do your loans have exactly? That's not something to worry about. All this is perfectly legal. By the way, who told you about my little business? You did. You gave me a... Nonsense. I never saw your face before. I never forget a face. Here, take my card. Thanks, I guess? Keep it. Don't know when you might need it. Oh, man. Good to see you again. I've missed you so much. You must be confusing me with someone else. I believe we've never met before. Are you sure? I would have sworn I know you from somewhere. Like here, five minutes ago. Are you a cop or something? No, no. Nothing like that. Okay, then. Here, have my card. I will remember you next time. Thanks, I guess? Keep it. Don't know when you might need it. S sorry, I've got epically drunk and I, I can't remember what day it is. It's the 22nd of July, 1987. You believe we're in 1987? Are, are you okay? Yeah. Just last week I had an accident and they told me that I might lose short-term memory for a couple of days. Besides that, I'm pretty dandy. By the way, are you interested in acquiring some extra dough for the games inside? Maybe. Just give me one of your cards. Thanks, I guess? Keep it. Don't know when you might need it. Just give me a card. I can help you if you run into... Yeah, yeah, just give me the card. Keep it. Don't know when you might need it, right? Let me in. Yes, of course. That did the trick. Can you do a trick for me or not? The troll challenges the magician, unknowing the dangers of having his mind blown. The magician accepts the challenge. Can you make that trick with the rings? The magician feels insulted by the cheap trick's request, yet he will comply. The audience can see that all the rings are linked together. Hey, can I check out those rings? Sure thing, but be careful. They're made of silver. Hmm, they seem pretty straight to me. Okay, now it's time to give them back. These rings are too big. I guess I will need them to be smaller in order to properly use them. And now, the magician puts away the rings. Can you make this smaller?
Let's try sparring again. I think I'll get you this time. Ho ho! Let's see the little fly try to take on the heavyweight. like goat headbutts, strong but purposeless. I will say, foolishly, come and fight me at the big game. Then we see who is man and who is pig. I'll make you cry in public, big man. Giving you my mojo? It's a good hand. You jinx it. <laughs> you have no idea how good your hand is. Okay, gentlemen. Time to show what you've got. So, what do you say, huh? I get everything. You have a handful of aces. All of them. The aces of hearts. What? No, that can't be right. And you actually have five of them. Man, you're the worst cheater I've ever seen. No, wait! I didn't cheat! Something must have happened! Let me call security. No! Wait! Wait! There must be some confusion! They've detained him. That went well. Okay, I got this man here. Gargoyle told me that those that get into trouble end up here, and nowadays, those who get in trouble end up in the big game. It is the best way to meet Ricardo Forte and get Dog out of here. I need to coerce them into changing places. That part shouldn't be hard. The question is, how am I supposed to take his place? I guess I'll have to talk to him and improvise. Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. An ugly, filthy, outstandingly stupid cheater. You gotta believe me. I had a legit hand. Someone framed me. Yeah, I haven't heard that one before. You think I'm stupid? You know what happens to those who try to swindle us? I, I only heard rumors. They used to disappear, but now they end up on the big game. And what happens to those that end up in the big game? They end up badly beaten up. It's pure carnage. They make them go one by one into a ring and beat the other unconscious, or worse, dead. How do you know about the big game? It's supposed to be a secret event. I used a fake ID to get in. You can bet on the monsters on stage. I've seen it a couple of times. It's brutal. That's interesting. Oh, you thought you could fool us not once, but twice. Well, you better tell me who the hell you're supposed to be, or I'm gonna mangle you until no one ever recognizes your corpse again. Well, I am, I, I am. Can't you remember who you are? Or are you preparing another lie? No, sir, please. Please, I have children! You better tell me now exactly who you are, or you're not even getting into the big game. I'm... I'm in big trouble, aren't I? I'm not even a monster! 
or whatever it is you call yourselves. My name is Douglas Baxter. I'm an instructor at a community college. I'm just visiting Lisbon. I just like to gamble. I'm a bit of a thrill seeker. When I heard about this place, I knew I had to get in, see what it was like. It became exhilarating, addicting. But I swear I didn't cheat. What's gonna happen to me? Okay, this gives me an idea. Look, I'm not a monster either. Just give me your disguise and I'll give you mine. I'll play the big game for you. What? Seriously? Yes, of course. Just wait here until I come back and I'll tell you when it's time to exchange places. You're insane. You'll get crushed out there. Don't worry. I have some experience dealing with monsters. I'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't say thanks just yet. Wait until you're in the clear. Just wait here and wait for my signal. Here, have these berries. They will help you paint your body like mine. Is it time yet? Yeah, I think I got everything I need to defeat that bastard. Just rub those blueberries against your skin and give me your mask. I will use this towel to clean myself up. I can't believe you're doing this for me. I have my own reasons to get in that game and wipe that smirk off of that bastard's face. Anyways, I think it's time to go. Oh, -ho. seems now we're fighting for real in front of a big audience. Don't feel bad if people make fun of you afterwards. Dog, you don't know the hurdles I've jumped today. All for you. I need this. I will enjoy breaking your stupid face. Okay, no kitty gloves now. I am going to shred you into so many pieces, not even a bureaucrat with OCD could piece you back up again. Dog, come on. The show's over. Let's go home. My name is Vilks Mondongo. A wolf is hungry for dog food. Talking is not the ant. That mustache is in really bad taste. If you don't take it off, I will. Oh no, my clever disguise. It's Dog Mendoza! Run, everyone! What the hell, pizza boy? I was so close to paying my debt. I mean, solving the case. Seriously? No one noticed but me? Seriously? Gentlemen, our boss has called for you. Ricardo Forte wants to see you now. That's great. I'm also looking forward to see him. Well, well, well. What have we here? Two little flies have bumped into my little cobweb. It's all his fault. I went all deep cover behind your back. And I would have caught you if it wasn't for this Dumbo here. Oh, don't blame the human. It would have taken a five-year-old two seconds to see through your disguise. We liked having you here. While you were here, we knew exactly what you were doing. We knew we would have no surprises. And you left a considerable debt, if you were ever to get out. I knew you lost all your money, you fat 
piece of turd? Oh, please, like I could ever lose. I have a method, all right? It was them who cheated. We were not counting on your human pet reaching this far into the cooking pot. Now, tell me what you know. What brought you here? Okay, this time we're being interrogated. I need to find a way to turn the tables and get a confession out of him. But for now, it is best to play along. Cavera sent me. That's impossible. Cavera is dead. H how do you know? Did you? I'm not the one being questioned here. But now that you mention Cavera, what do you know about his demise? You and I know who did it. You and I know who is chasing you in the shadows. Yeah, and who is that? She has black hair and emerald labyrinthian eyes. Eyes that carve deep into your soul. Exactly who are you talking about? The person who left the note. Which note? You know which one. If you saw Caveira's dead body, you obviously saw the note that said, You are next. So, you either put the note there for someone else to find, or it was for you. That could be anyone. No, it was for someone specific. It was for someone that was going to visit Caveira and find his body. And that leads you to believe that someone is after all of us. Good. At least he recognized that there was an us to be after. But now that you mention Caveira, what do you know about his demise? You should know. Your mark is all over the place. My mark? How so? What did you find on the scene that tells you I was behind this horrid incident? Well, you were obviously connected. You had motive. What makes you say so? I saw what you did in those movies. What do you mean? I saw what you did to those other monsters. The things you filmed. Those were special effects. Very good special effects. You have no way of proving the contrary. But if they weren't, you would have a reason to kill him. To cut loose ends. Look, human. I would like to know who killed him as much as you. It is, after all, in my best interest. Despite your accusations, I did not do it. If I would have done it, why would I do it now? Why not before? Damn, I told him about the movies. Now he knows I know, and he is strangely calm about it. But he also raised a good question. Why would he wait until now to kill him? I need to pursue another approach to get to the facts. Well, you must have tons of enemies. All powerful men do. Yes, but I wasn't only talking about you. You said that someone could be after us. That implies more than one person and or entity. And it's difficult to believe that Romero was someone powerful. Yes, the three of us. We work together in movies. You knew that already. And, like I said, I believe those were not horror films. Those were snuff films. And, like I said, those were special effects. You can't prove the contrary. Romero seemed to think otherwise. He was filled with guilt about his work with you, especially about this particular girl. It's a shame dead men tell no tales. That could also be said about Cabrera. He will remain silent forever, too. And I'm questioning you to know what happened there. Aren't we running in circles with this? Yeah, but the theory fits. Someone knows about something that you did and is hunting you down. If it's not you, who's behind these deaths? It must be a third party. Someone who knows what happened and is cutting loose ends. And who could that be? That's a question you should be asking yourself. Maybe a brother, a sister, a daughter? They would have better chances telling the truth. Monsters would band against those who sold out their own kind. And that's what will happen when the truth comes out. It doesn't matter if they have proof or not. A witch hunt will begin. 
And guess who is holding the broom and waiting for the torch? Yes, it is also the reason why you won't be leaving alive. What? Has he just confessed? What is it with this radical change of tone? So, you admit it? You admit killing all those monsters in your films? I'm getting bored with this. It doesn't matter what I admit. If you leave here and start spreading the rumor, it would raise too many questions. And that's why I can't have you leaving this place. Questions like... What happened to the girl? What's all this about a gypsy curse? She was gorgeous and indeed a Romani. When she found out what we were doing, unlike Romero, she opposed it. I guess all vagabonds stick to their own kind. And that was her mistake. A mistake I took care of. And yes, she yelled a curse while she was bleeding. A lung punctured. Hawking blood and words all the same. She said, she would come back and hunt us down. She said that the last thing we would feel was abominable terror, and that we would die screaming, surrounded by the ghosts of our victims. It was delicious. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Who were all those monsters in the movies? They were nobody. In the beginning, we pulled monsters from the streets, people no one would miss. Then, when I opened the casino, we cashed in on everyone that ended up with big debts. We slaughtered them in front of the camera to make some profit off their sorry asses. Everyone knew that getting in gambling debts was a bad idea in Lisbon. But they never found the bodies, so we kept on doing it. No one asks questions. No one cares. It's like free candy. Why something so elaborate? Why put them on screen? Caveira was always looking for his big breakthrough in the film industry. He became a cult director instead. His films didn't have much success on the silver screen, but with the revenue from VHS and DVDs, he managed to open his theme park. I guess that being independent pays off sometimes. Romero was... well, he was Romero. He was also looking for a breakthrough, but was rather... Um, simple-minded. His big ego was happy to see himself on the big screen, and his mind could not conjure up questions. He got cold feet when he found out how we made all those effects, when he saw what I truly was. Me? It was a little more personal. When you are born strong, really strong, the whole world is made of toothpicks. Either you get careful, cunning, precise, elegant, or you get into a lot of trouble. I see all your bodies as made of twigs, and the sound of them cracking is too sweet. Have you ever broken someone's arm completely? It's like weaving wicker, like popping bubble wrap. One thing still bugs me. What happened to the dead bodies? How come no one found one yet? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? That's where we're headed. 